What is going on, everybody? Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's live stream. I'm Ja, and here we have I'm Mike. And uh, today we'll have some interesting stuff for you right here because uh, we're gonna be dropping a lot of knowledge on you regarding what's inside the monitor. So later in the stream, we'll be opening this bad boy right there. Don't mind the looks, the, aest the aesthetics, because uh, I will explain that later. So how was your week? Ah, wonderful. Yeah, I mean, okay, maybe it will make your week even better by telling you we actually have a giveaway, right? Let me grab that. Yeah, because uh, like always, we're very generous. So if you go to msi.com slash do slash insider and perform a few actions right on there, you might be one of the winners because we have more winners of today's live stream. So the more so, actions you perform in there, the more chance you have to win. So yeah. you will increase so your chance. Go get that Steam code and enjoy the games. My right. week was hella busy. <laughs> so what did you do? Yeah, we had some controversy about uh, whether or not our motherboards would support oh, yeah, next-gen AMD processors. But, uh, cam. but uh, So I heard something about that, but I didn't quite catch it. What's it what was it about? Well, there was some uh, media coverage that uh, none of our existing AM4 motherboards would support next-gen AMD, really? AMD but processors. But that's not true. We're currently still working on that and trying to verify as many boards as possible. Uh, oh, okay. I see, I see. That's, uh, that's quite a bold statement. It was quite a bold statement, but uh, we gave out our statement and we're still working <coughs> on that. So nothing final yet. And. Uh, <coughs> All right. <laughs> In the two weeks' time, we'll have a nice AMD live stream. We'll also try to arrange uh, a guest from AMD uh, who will call in on us. So, <laughs> gotta be good. I hope so. And uh, yeah, nice to, I mean, read about you too. Oh, they're, they're I happy keep, to I see keep you again. How to pronounce his name? I mean, he, oh. he, I think he explained that. D K I I N A M. Yeah. Maybe maybe we should read the other way around. No. Not okay. Either. <laughs> but uh, okay, enough of this. So <laughs> today's live stream, right? You can see right here we have a kind of a broken but not broken monitor. So what did you do to this? Well, <clears throat> first of all, let me just tell a little bit of why this happened. Because I think I already know. You were playing Counter Strike and you couldn't win. Yeah, so I decided <laughs> to stab my Ben uh, in the monitor. No, exactly. that's not what happened. But no? <laughs> I think uh, about uh, more than a month ago, there was some shooting incident in the US. And um, I heard something about that. Yeah, you heard something about I that. I heard something about that. And I heard that one of uh, the MSI monitors got hit and still kept working. So when we heard about that news, we were just like, hmm, how sturdy is it really? So, you know, we kind of got curious and then got carried away because we kept trying ways of, you know, destroying them, uh, ways of, you know, just try to imitate how it would be like to shoot a monitor because obviously that monitor got shot, but we in the Netherlands, we're not that free on guns. So, you know, we don't have uh, pistols. That's a little bit stricter here. Anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so we couldn't uh, shoot a monitor. So we tried every other way to see, okay, how can we imitate that? And then, So what did you all do to it? Yeah, you know, there were, there's been a lot of crazy stuff. <laughs> but I think that the, 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 the thing that really did it was uh, the drilling. I think when we used the drill, uh, it really see, went... They look like bullet holes. Yeah, it really went a bit overboard with the drill because... <laughs> Obviously, okay, in that other story, it happened while well, there was still something in between the monitor and the shooter. So there was like a wooden wall or something like that. And it was it got hit on the back side. So obviously, you know, the back side is gonna be a lot more sturdy and strong than the front side where the panel is directly, you know, visible and well, very uh sensitive to drilling. But we thought, you know, <laughs> hey, since we can't really shoot through the back side or anything, why don't we just attack the, pine, uh, the panel in the first place? Because that's what it's about, right? If the monitor will still work after being damaged like this. So we started drilling and drilling and yeah, they were- Still does, it's a bit flimsy on this yeah, side. Yeah, so we, uh, we worked into quite a beautiful holes in there, which actually kind of resembles a bullet hole, right? On the background. And it still works. So <laughs> that was great to see actually. It did hurt a little bit, honestly, to really It hurt, is painful, hurt it hurts my heart. Was, but 144 Hz, 4040p gaming monitor, and you destroyed it. Yes. Well, stepping on my It's still enjoyable for like 70% <laughs> of the screen, so I guess there's that, right? But okay, a little bit more about the story, maybe. So, 
and we actually have a guest for you coming up, coming right up, who was the owner of the monitor that, that got shot in this whole incident. So his name is uh, Eric Gunn, and he will elaborate a hell lot more on the story. He lives from, in Fresno, right? Yeah. United States in California? Yeah, in Fresno. And uh, he is going to elaborate from his uh, well, VIP kind of perspective because he was the directly involved uh, someone in this whole incident. So um, I hope Eric is right uh, is with us right now, and uh, let's welcome Eric. And if you guys have any questions for Eric, uh, try to post them in the chat. We'll try to keep Let it up. Let me just yeah. grab something so we can hear him as well. Exactly. <laughs> so here we have Eric. His Twitch name is Boba Papa. Quite an interesting name. And you can also find him on Twitter at EricGun98. Uh, so Eric, tell us, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, Thanks for joining us on stream. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So how are you doing? It was quite a scare, huh? Um, um, I'm just pretty I'm tired, just pretty because, tired it's because it's like, like it's 7 a.m. 7 a.m. In, in the morning. You know, gamers you know, doesn't, gamers wake, up doesn't wake up this early. Okay, I think we have a I little bit of echo. I think I can hear you twice. Echo, yes. So, chat, please let us know if you also hear an echo. Yeah, For us, it's uh, fine, but uh, let us see where the problem is with the echo. Let me take a quick look. Are you by any chance also watching the live stream, Eric, and has and have the live stream open? Um, um, yeah, I was watching. Yeah, the I was watching the live stream. Yeah, I tuned it down. Yeah, I tuned it just down. To make sure just to make sure that it's not just just to make sure that it's not an issue, not here. issue here. All right, but have you closed it? Yeah, I've, I've yeah, closed I've, it. I've closed it. I see. I think uh, the echo is less now. Is I it? think for us it's understandable, but let me see if yeah, there's still echo. There's still echo. Down. Well, okay, let's try know. again. Technology. Is there still echo? No. I think now it's I can just hear you once. Yeah, All right. So I hope that's it's good. The same for so our tech genius just fixed it. All right. Chat. So where were we? Sorry for the interruption, guys. Um, so yeah, obviously quite scary. And you, and you just said you're quite happy, you know, because it happened like at 4 a.m. and you were not gaming at that moment, right? Yep. Um. Uh. To be honest, I'm still pretty shocked about like how it all happens like you know when you think about it you just like like I can't believe it actually happens but we actually survived through that so it's like kind of scary but in the same time it's like it's not real like you just don't think about it I can't imagine I can't imagine but honestly the were you the target um no we are actually not the target um, <laughs> are you I'm, sure? ha I'm happy for you <laughs> yeah uh, at first, we thought we were the target, so we were like pretty scared about it. And the okay. the police actually came in and they kind of like explained the whole situation to us, like yeah. how how it how it happens and stuff. Like there's like multiple calls regarding on um, like this uh, situation where there's gunshot heard in 4 a.m. and they say like there were like people partying at the back street and they just like went crazy and stuff like that so we were actually glad that we weren't the target because um, before that like there was like some few things that happening in my house where our package was stolen and stuff like that so we thought like oh we were being targeted or something like that so you also got stuff stolen yeah you it's just sad. Like I, I, I bought a shoe and uh, it just, it's just gone. Like when I went, when I, when I go down and get it, it's, it's already gone. Uh that's 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 shit. I guess you got shot up and you got shit stolen. Yeah, it's it's but, pretty bad. That way so it's pretty bad. So what I wonder then is like, is is this kind of stuff like normal around there in the neighborhood? I mean, um, it does this happen more often? Um, it seems to be kind of like, um, how to say. I think it's, it happens often, so yeah, it's not it's, it's not surprising to like most of the people here, but it's kind of surprising for me because I'm a I'm a international student, you know, just coming here and trying to get my degree, and yeah, it just, it just happens all the way. Cause where are you from originally? Um, I'm from Malaysia. Okay, <clears throat> you have a really great uh, American accent. Because <laughs> you're just you're just a student there, right? Just an yeah. international student doing mm -hmm. you some uh, stuff abroad. Mm -hmm. I see, but you are also a gamer, right? If I understood correctly. Mm -hmm. I play a yes, lot. Yes, join the league. <laughs> We're all gamers right here. Yeah, oh, I, play, uh, I think I play a lot of games. 
All right. So, what are your favorite games? Um, I'm actually currently like playing mainly Apex. That's all. Like, I don't play any other games. Oh boy, Apex. Yes. Yep. Who, who is not playing Apex? I wonder right now. Well, yeah. I actually haven't really, really got into Apex yet, but I think it will. Time will tell. Have you played Apex? I haven't tried it yet, but I heard it's pretty good. I well, think it's I one of the more popular battle royales right now. So. Yeah, I know. I mean, I heard from everybody that it's so good. Like everybody around me is just keep getting involved in Apex. This is this is crazy. Like how fast the game goes viral. Well, well, I guess maybe it's more time for us to really go enjoy Apex. So you also stream Apex, right? Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, I used to stream uh, Apex, but now I'm kind of like stop a little bit because like there's too much like school works and stuff. I have to where I work on my own stuff. Yeah, but I'll be back on streaming. I mean, does has has any gamer ever given any thought about school and gaming balance? Yeah. <laughs> Not in my experience. <laughs> Usually playing well, until way too late in the night. Exactly. So you know, just no sleep. And then have a test in the morning. Red Bull all the way. <laughs> Exactly, but you actually I, I, yeah, I used to do that. I used to do that. I used to do that a lot. Like I used yeah. to play PUBG, and uh -huh. I used to play from like nine p.m. all the all the way to like seven a.m. And then I have like an exam at eight a.m. So I just like I didn't even sleep. I just I just off the <laughs> comp, and I I just go to school right away. Well, there you have it, guys. Golden example of a gamer life. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let us know uh, how how your how your balance have been. Uh, up till now, you know, gaming and uh, school-wise, we're interested because you know wasn't that good for me the balance. So back to the monitor, <laughs> yeah, where it's all about. And uh, so, how have you actually enjoyed the monitor so far? Because it actually got hit, right? Yeah. And um, then I think so. You got yeah, new ones. I got I got hit, and MSI actually hooked me up with like new monitors, and I was like pretty happy about it because I actually wanted to buy like a new one and. They instantly hooked me up on Reddit and they kind of like contact me and work it out with me. So I was pretty happy about like the whole thing because I I, I almost bought a new one like instantly. I actually went I like, search up and stuff already and someone just tagged me like, oh, um, MSI is like commenting and you should reply back. I was like, oh okay, because I didn't I didn't see the comment. So which one did you get? Um, so they hooked me up with the 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 MAG two seven one C. And they hooked me up with Wait. two of them actually, because we got they, two. Yeah, they actually gave me two of the new monitor because at first I got I, more bullet protection in your room. I know, right? Well, <laughs> well Mike, when are you coming to shoot my monitor? <laughs> uh, probably tonight. But All you right, get I'll be one. waiting for you. I'll put it right in front of the window. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, I so, think there's been new uh, some nice messages in the chat. Yeah. So, so uh, the only the only deal that I have to follow up is to send my old one back to yep. them. That's right, the, because yeah. that one is probably being held up for like uh, some Hall of Fame stuff. Yeah, so <laughs> they really imagine. want the monitor back, so they work it out with me and they say, you know what, we'll send you two monitor and like, you know, who can resist the two monitor offer, right? Yeah. So let's put this on the ground. I think in chat we have more PUBG players. They're saying this MSI monitor is better than level three armor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there were like a meme about it on Twitter and people just edited it and it was pretty funny about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I can imagine, cause, uh, but what I can't imagine is that, how did you, well, how, how was your life like after this incident, like, because uh, you were kind of like, you got kind of, yeah, got viral on the internet, right, with your post and, uh, you know, yep. people reacting to it, and you know, it there's a lot fast. of news articles yeah. about it, uh, I'll show you a few examples later if you uh, haven't seen any yet, uh, I mean the chat, so not you obviously, because you already know. So, did you like get famous or something? Um, I got a little bit famous at first, but <laughs> after that, it's just like, you know, everything like just famous for a while and then it just die off. Like, it, it works yeah. like that, yeah. So, when I start streaming and people like, like they were like, oh, um, they asked me a lot of stuff about the incident and people are actually like, they are pretty nice, you know, they actually um, say like, oh, like take care and like give good wishes and stuff like that. So it's pretty nice to see like how the gaming community is pretty like positive and like pretty supportive. And yeah, really trying to help each other, right? Yeah. So it's after I start streaming, and some people actually notice like, oh, this this guy can actually play games, and they just like stay and follow me and stuff like that. Like I have like few people who are like very constant in supporting me, so I was pretty happy about that. So how many followers did you gain on Twitch after the incident? 
um, after posting my Twitch link, I actually got 200 followers in just like a, f- a few hours, I guess. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty good for a starter. Yeah. Well, that's a hell of a lot more than me because I have zero. <laughs> <laughs> so, but then you, you received the new monitors. Like, how, how's the experience then? Because it's like an upgrade to the other uh, model because the other model was like the G27 to uh, C2, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, it, so how it's does a, it feel? Um, I think it feels like it has more feature on the monitor, of course, like the button to like turn it on and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, the red joystick on the back. Yeah, it's more friendly. And um, other than that, I feel like um, it's like a little bit upgrade. So yeah, I'm pretty happy about it. And I have two of them. So well, lucky but, you, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't happen every day. Okay, so but. Uh, so what kind of setup do you have, like your desktop and stuff? Like, um, what do you use? Like, what kind of video card do you have? I do have a MSI video card actually. I'm using the MSI 1070 Ti um, Titanium Edition. 1070 I Ti, good choice, mm-hmm. good choice. Wow. Um, probably gonna upgrade to RTX soon, but we'll see how about that. Mm. Yeah. Can you send me your old video card? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I can make good use of 1070 Ti, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I actually cool. bought this during like, um, you know, the crisis of, you know, the graphic card where the price was like skyrocketing due to like yeah. cryptocurrency and stuff. Yeah, the mining stuff. Crypto mining. Yeah, but I bought it like before that, like literally like before that week. So it was a good did you, deal. Did you have some inside information? Uh, <laughs> kind of. My friend kind of like predicted like this is going to happen. Oh, and he did. He told, yeah, he, so he told me to just buy it like before it's too late. So, yeah. Right in time. Well, that's right the benefit of time. having the right people around, I guess. So you also built your PC yourself? Um, yeah, I actually built my PC myself uh, with a little help of my friend. Yeah, We just buy all the parts and just assemble it together in the house. So that's, I guess, the same friend that recommended you to buy it before it's too late. Yeah, kind of, yeah. One heck of a friend. <laughs> and well, I wish I, somebody told me before I can't. that. I'm actually in a room where I got shot. So mm-hmm. wait, is that the bootleg? Oh wait, I, I actually can show you guys. Um, that will be right. great if you can, right, because right. I was gonna ask you about the wall and stuff. But so yeah. as you can see, like this is my, this is my monitor. I uh-huh. I actually still put it in the same place. Like yes, you can see that's a bullet hole right behind it. <laughs> yeah, so because it's have saved your life. <laughs> yep, this is the bullet hole. So can you, can you watch the street from there? Of uh, definitely not like it's not that <laughs> deep like I don't know man the, the the street is like right exactly here like you can mm-hmm. see from out here is it's a street so like this is the bullet hole and like there's like two more right here I mean, like, I right mean, they, here. I mean it, it, they kind of have something about them I mean I wouldn't even fix them I think so like, <laughs> it's quite a good story it so, is like, a good story you can see like yeah. This, it went from here all the way to like, like here. You can see the ceiling. Like yeah. That's another so there tool. was still quite some power left, right? After it penetrated the first wall. Mm-hmm. Because if if I, if you know, like, do you know what kind of material the wall is made of? Um. So what I heard is that in in the U.S., most people get like uh, what we call a drywall. Yeah. So drywall is kind of like. I don't know, but when you hit it, it feels like paper. Instead, like, you know, in Europe and in Asia, we get, like, um, bricks and stuff. Yeah, oh, bricks yeah. and stones. Yeah, so <laughs> those are more reliable in my op- yeah, cause opinion. Yeah, because I actually speculated that it was, like, some kind of wood because that's also quite popular in the U.S., right? The wooden material. Oh, yeah, the wooden ma- yeah. material. Um, but I think is... some of the house has, like, mix of them. So there's, like, wood in the middle and <clears throat> probably, like, drywall around the wood. So, yeah, yeah that's how it works. And wow. when, when this actually, like, okay, so how, like, uh, I got woke by, like, the shots in the midnight, but I didn't know it was a shot. I thought it was just, like, something dropped down, from, like, really hot, like, downstairs. So I woke up, and I was like, um, uh, what, what's going on? And I, I literally just stayed awake for, like, an hour just sitting on my bed just to make sure that, like, no one is actually in our house. <laughs> I thought someone actually broke in and I, was, I just sit there and like, oh my god, what's going on? And I didn't hear anything, so I was like, okay, nothing's going on, I'm gonna go back to sleep. <laughs> so I went back to sleep and then next next day in the morning and my friend was like, he was like knocking on my door, he's like, 
like yo you got you got check this out man you got check this out <laughs> I, I was like check check what out uh, and i went to his room and he shows he shows me like the bullets and stuff i was like oh probably that's why like maybe that's the reason why i woke up like last night like probably it's gunshot and i was like right so you like, woke up but yeah i was like dang my, my friend's unlucky man like i was like Whew, l- lucky he didn't shoot shoot in my shoot in my room and i went back to my room as about like i was about to turn on my pc and when i was about to turn it on and there was like dust everywhere on my desk <laughs> <laughs> then i was yeah. like you can oh, imagine oh shit it's it's like it, it shuts my room too and i look around and like there's two holes there and there's one hole in the wall behind the monitor i was like oh shit is my monitor <laughs> still working and I, I, I suddenly turned it on and i was like Oh, 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 I was like hoping it works and stuff like that and I saw it turn it on and it works perfectly I was like damn it if it, it freaking missed my monitor I was, I was I didn't even check on the monitor because I uh, I assume it missed my monitor like it's impossible for it to work if it actually hits my monitor because it actually pen- it actually has the power of like penetrating like two to three stuff that's what happens in my friend's room it penetrate the window and through the blind and then through the, oh wow! The fan, yeah, really? and then it, yeah, and then it hits on the ceiling, and the bullet stuck on the ceiling. So you actually like penetrate like three stuff. So I, I straight away assumed that it missed my monitor. I didn't check on my monitor. I was just fighting for the the next hole on the on the ceiling. So we were just like fighting for it, finding the bullets and stuff. And then my friend was like, "Dude, it actually hits your monitor." And he turned it around, and there was like a hole on it, and like dust everywhere on the monitor. And we were, and we were all like, like. Oh shit! It still works. Like, how is that possible? Like, and oh, my wow. friend, was, my friend was like, you know what? Let's just, you know, let's tr- like tweet this in this incident as a meme, and let's see how, like how it goes. You know, like. Well, that's how shit go viral, yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> you want shit to go viral? That's how shit go viral. Yeah, that's how shit goes viral. <laughs> it went really fast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so actually, basically, you guys just posted it as like a joke. Yeah. Like, we- hey, look, my monitors are still working after yeah. the shot. They were just trying to like make some like this is America joke, you know, and it actually went viral. I, I I couldn't believe it. That's some entrepreneurship thinking right there. So we have a question in chat. How many holes were there? Yeah. So how uh, many bullets penetrated your wall? So there's like three in my room and there's like two in my friend's room. Like Oh right, so is- there's someone else living there too. Yeah, um uh, it's my housemate, it's literally like next ah. yeah, next room. So I actually text I text him when I got shocked and woke up in the 4 a.m. and he slept through the entire thing like he didn't even wake up. <laughs> he didn't even wake up. <laughs> yeah, he didn't even wake up. <laughs> you know what some people say about people, you know, like even if if there's an earthquake, you know, they will sleep right through it. I mean, I think I'll wake up if there was like a few gunshots right next to my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but maybe people there are just used to gunshots. I don't know. I mean... Not me yeah. at least. <laughs> yeah, not, I mean, not, it is not me too. Uh, I actually didn't even know it was a gunshot. I don't know how a gun like sounds like. So, and yeah, I didn't even know it's a gunshot. I woke up knowing that I was shot. <laughs> so somebody is asking, were you sleeping in your chair? Well, luckily he was sleeping in his bed. So <laughs> yeah, so yeah, luckily I was sleeping on my bed. Like, and it's it's pretty lucky that they actually didn't shoot on any like near. Where my bed is located at? Yeah. Because yeah, you can see like the hole. It actually can penetrate like through the wall, and and it, it still can penetrate through the ceiling. So, I'm pretty sure it can penetrate th- through my brain or something like that. Yeah. And Wouldn't like the to be- see that. <laughs> yeah, the the best comment I've seen like about this incident is probably on Reddit. One guy saying like, "Oh, stream sniping got real." <laughs> yeah, that, yeah that, that was the, the best yeah. I've seen. Yeah, because you're a streamer, right? For those of you who just joined, you know, Eric is also the streamer, so... Uh, yeah, his name on. is on top, so go check it out. Exactly. Well, uh, Eric, uh, it's been a real pleasure to talk to you, and what a scare. And I really hope this never happens to you again. Yeah, even though it's so, a very good story, anyone let's else. stick to this one story. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, we wish you a lot of success on your uh, stream career, and keep a healthy balance between gaming and school, of course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you about that. All nighters yeah. again. <laughs> All yeah, right, uh, then uh, I hope you have a really pleasant day. All right, Eric, thank you. Thank you very much for joining. <laughs> thank you, bye-bye. Thank Cheers. you. Whew. Well, Mike, quite a story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there were quite a few details that I didn't know about. You mean, I mean, 
there were quite a few news articles because I can show uh, you guys a few if you uh, haven't seen it yet. It went viral Cause, so yeah, fast. Cause, uh, there were quite a few news uh, outlets, you know, reporting all this stuff. So I have just captured a few right here, you know, PC game, for example, saying this gaming monitor literally stopped the bullet, a stray bullet and still works. So for those of you guys who just joined or don't know what we're talking about right now uh, is about this whole incident that got reported and we just interviewed Eric who was the owner of the monitor. So here you can see for like for example with Board Panda also says gaming monitor stops one to five uh, shots at this guy's house. But Amazon offers to replace it. And Fresno B for those of you who think hey this is fake news, alternative facts and stuff. Well. Fresno B is actually uh, their local news outlet, news outlet and they yeah. also reported on this. So it's not just some hardware website, you know, reporting on something that they heard of or something. It went very viral on all kinds of hardware yeah, exactly. and tech sites, etc. Um, so, yeah. But also the local media picked yeah. it up. So, you know, but the local media, the Fresno B, uh, they were a little bit more dramatic than the rest. I mean, if you read it, if you can read it, I'll read it for you. It says Fresno student and roommate nearly shot. <laughs> a gaming monitor stopped uh, one of the five bullets. So as you can see the tone there a little bit more dramatic. But hey, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I mean, so you guys kind of get, get the idea of, you know, hey, the, this guy's house got shut up, you know, his monitor got shot, and it really gained a lot of attention online. So no, we're also here to really kind of, you know, recast this news to you, uh, for those of you also who uh, have not heard about this news. I think this is quite interesting and yeah. Right. Before we continue, maybe we can pick our first winner in our giveaway. Oh yeah, time flies. Time flies. Good idea. So, so if, I hope you. Yeah. If you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. I heard some people could not see the link there, so I also post it in chat again. Um, and then let me quickly pick our first winner. So we will have several winners today. So even if you don't win it right now, please sign up so you will still have a chance. To win one exactly $20. and the more actions you perform on the link the more chance you will have at winning one of the steam codes so go fill up your steam wallet and check it out so who is the first winner mike i'm trying to draw a winner but it's not really cooperating yet We're having a little bit of a technical difficulty but stay tuned i'm really trying to work on my uh, professional broadcast uh style you know let so how is it working see. right now? It seems to be working now. Ah, I think we have our first winner. We do actually. And his name, yeah, you can have it. You can have oh. it. Oh, well, I always <laughs> get the difficult names. You can have it. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, we have a nickname. I'll go for the nickname. Shit. So congratulations, Crazy Gamer ninety two. Gamers ninety two. Sorry, that's your Crazy nickname. Crazy Gamers ninety two. Congratulations. I don't want to pronounce your real name. Apparently. I, I can. It's, it's it's difficult. <laughs> Something like Parthia Pratim Zarkar. Ah, sounds pretty good. Yeah. If you know what the heck that I'm talking about, then congratulations to you. You <laughs> want uh, a 20 US dollar Steam code. Yeah. And we'll have several to give away, so make sure mm. to sign up in the giveaway. Exactly. We have more to come. There are more to come, so uh, stay tuned, guys. People in chat are asking, can Europeans join in the giveaway? Yes, it's a global giveaway, so it doesn't matter yeah, where you're don't from. Don't discriminate. Yeah, we're Everyone all equal. can join in the giveaway. No, not mm -hmm. um, region limited. Yeah. And coming back to the issue, you know, this this whole viral stuff. You know, we're getting like a compliment on your mug. <laughs> If shit, really, if shit really hits the fan, I can always pull the you pin. And then th throw your mug. <laughs> yes. Something will explode, but I <laughs> imagine it's not going to be pretty. But so Eric also already mentioned, right? There was like a lot of hilarious reactions and stuff on Reddit. And also, I just checked on his uh, Eric's original Twitter post, and there were hilarious reactions uh, to his Twitter post. I mean, People's meme games have really gotten strong over the days, man, uh, over the years, I, I think. I still remember that I mean, phone, man. I had it. Yeah, this Nokia, <laughs> what, what type was it, like 3310? Yeah, Nokia yeah. 3310. I remember the time when this was like still popular and I was like this little toddler. That guy. thing was so strong. Yeah. I dropped it so many times and it never broke. It's indestructible. It broke the floor, but the, the phone, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the phone didn't break. This thing is probably the like the strongest stuff that the, the humankind has ever built. 
no exaggerations there. I think you will all agree with me. And you know, a movie. And if you if you even manage to impress an Nokia thirty three ten, then it must be impressive. Yes. So uh, <laughs> you know, he's proud of our gaming monitor. I mean, is that something, right? Exactly. <laughs> so uh, Ego, uh, the original poster, nice one. And Alien <laughs> goes on to say, uh, a one hundred forty four hertz monitor stops a bullet, but a two hundred forty hertz will shoot back. Oh, and then it's getting dangerous in a while if we're getting more and more 240 hertz monitors out exactly, there. Exactly, because nowadays you know there are <laughs> a lot of mainstream 144 hertz monitors. But you know, you and me, we're really into the competitive gameplay. So 240 hertz. So lucky us, our monitor will be able to shoot back, which will be great. Good. Yeah, and uh, okay, just somebody else you know just reaffirms it. Facts, love it. And then Ivan, the, you know, the awesome, he says, Yo, I need a relationship as strong as your monitor, bro. Glad you're doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> How's your relationship doing, Mike? Oh, it's, it's okay. It's okay. All right, She's I'm not firing at me yet. So <laughs> and otherwise, I'll just grab my gaming monitor That's and something. keep it in front of me. That's something. <laughs> keep at it. Keep at it. <laughs> oh, my God. So, uh, and it actually doesn't stop there because there are also some people, well, they have a channel. They have a very popular YouTube channel. And they actually first, well, the host said it himself. He was like, when we heard about this story, you know, we weren't sure that this uh, MSI monitor, it was the G27C2, that it actually got shot and still kept working. So he was kind of skeptical and he took it of to... Of course he is. Yeah. If you hear that a gaming monitor blocks a bullet, of course you're yep. skeptical. And he was just like, you know, it's got to be just some viral joke or something. So he took the exact monitors and took to them to check a it out shooting range and really took it to the extreme and shot at him. I mean, I he tested it the American way. <laughs> the real American way. I mean, I have the video right here and uh, I'm going to show you guys. <clears throat> so, yeah, their channel is called uh, The Cow Chop. So, all credits to them. We have nothing to do with their channel, no, with this content, or with him. You know, no idea. They just did this. We just watched it and were impressed by the way they yeah, actually. We just got informed that you know there was some kind of famous YouTube channel that did this uh, video, and we we're just like, let's go check it out. And I always thought you know maybe it's also fun for you guys to watch that. They actually, you know, here in the beginning, uh, they were just talking about the monitor, like, hey, did you hear about this news and blah blah blah? And then they took the exact model because the video is actually 20 minutes. Minutes. So we're not going to go through the whole video. So if you guys are interested in the video, go to their channel called Chop. It's right uh, on the upper top of the screen. There we can see Eric with the setup. Yeah. So they're just briefly going through you know, what happened and stuff. And uh, I'm just going to skip through the video to some interesting parts for you guys to see. And uh, so here they have already brought the boxes. So they actually brought a gun expert to this experiment. I mean, if you're going to do something like this, definitely have something. Uh, someone uh, in the neighborhood uh, and nearby who has knowledge about was, uh, this stuff, right? Or right. maybe don't do this in your yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. Just exactly. <laughs> do do this like far water. from. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> from who, who goes around like 4 a.m. in the morning just shoots at houses and stuff? <laughs> it's an interesting world sometimes. Yeah, I mean, we just keep the shooting for in video games. Yeah. I would like my house whole at 4 a.m. So here, you know, they brought the box out and they were gonna unbox it and just say like, "Hey, this was the monitor that um, that was being shot at." And then I believe around here they will be really starting to shoot at it. Yeah. <clears throat> so I believe this guy wasn't really. A gunman type of guy, All so he, I think he him. missed the monitor a lot of times. <laughs> oh, still, eventually yeah. he hit it. But I'm not sure if I would be able to. <laughs> did you hit it? Yeah, I mean, it was also know. quite windy. Right? Did it? And uh, what you guys huge, have to pay man. attention to is that remember the the original story was that they actually did shot it? through a wall the and then really hit small. the monitor. So even though yeah. it wasn't a brick wall, it was just anything. some drywall like it Eric still said. slows down the yeah. bullet quite a lot. It still well. kind of slows down yeah. the bullet a little bit. I, I uh, practice. So the impact on the monitor yeah. is not a as bit less. great it's when you hit it directly. Right but they is what they're doing right <laughs> they now. Actually so they're did it, hit just it shooting with air in between. Yeah. So I believe they are shooting with like a 22 right now. Uh, so that's a kind of like bullet type for those of you who are familiar with it. Ooh. And 
I have like zero knowledge about this, but I, I think I also said that that was comparable to the bullet type that was used in yeah. the shooting itself, right? In the shooting itself, uh, the gun expert said that, uh, you know, he will, from his uh, experience, he will expect that the kids running around with the gun were using 22 because that's more common between kids running around the street, apparently. With guns? Yes. <laughs> so yeah, on the video you can see, you know, they really shot up the monitor. Like the Initially, they were trying to recreate where the monitor oh, wow. was actually being shot at, so on the left the upper corner, but uh, obviously their aim the wasn't the really up to par. I think they also shot from quite a distance. Yeah, yeah. No, so they kind of hit like the, the lower part of the monitor, and, and the event, I think the bullets even went through the monitor right one, here. Maybe take the sniper and, and the whole point of this video was that they were going to test it, and then they were going to bring it back to their studio to see, does it hold up? Does it actually work if you shoot the monitor up? So here they have actually uh, taken up a lot of tries with different guns, different ammunitions. I think he, around here somewhere they actually also use a sniper. <laughs> so they brought more models to shoot at. And uh, he, well, here they even okay, just a much bigger gun already. So you know they were really going to this, the extreme for the content. Smart. Try again. And here they were actually oh, shooting at the monitor with yeah, the shotgun, that, which jammed at first, so that was kind of on the climax. All right. And go boom. surprisingly, well, see for yourself. Oh, it man. didn't blow apart. Jesus, man, I would have expected like the monitor to just explode like fucking. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think you shouldn't shoot up close to the monitor yeah. with this. And cool. to those of you uh, watching right now, don't try wow. this at home. It's really not That's recommended. Not <coughs> I mean, we tried this. And, with, and with don't use it as armor yourself. Because no. yeah. if you hit it directly, bullets will go through monitors. You're of course, it's a cool story, but there was a wall in between. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not going to respawn like oh in the game. God. so No. So yeah, and here you can see like uh, some bullets really just blasted like through the whole screen, right? Because wow. they started to use more powerful ammunition, I believe 9 millimeters. So, and then in the end they took all the stuff back to their studio to test. Uh, okay, fun, we have shot at the monitor, but does it still work? So, he hooked it on and... If you didn't damage the screen, this thing would still work. It would still yeah, you on. can see some damage, <laughs> yeah. but it still works. I mean, there's a big hole right there, but yeah. everything besides that hole still works like nothing happened. <laughs> I don't know what to say, man. I, I really so I don't. guess he was quite I, pleased I, with I, uh, the fact that this wasn't just some kind of made-up story. And he got to modern, test his first yeah. hand. I mean, lucky yeah, him, what is, a life. Just trying to do some YouTube videos and shooting and stuff and making money, right? Getting a question in chat. Mr. Mastodox is asking, does MSI have a G-Sync compatible 144 hertz monitor have? at 27 inch and an affordable one, price that puts out more crazy, than 250 uh, CD you know, per we'll square meter? And it would be nice. It would be a nice feature if it was also a bullet stopper. Well, this guy's really asking some specific questions. <laughs> well, actually, initially we weren't going to really go into the G-Sync compatible story, but since you ask it anyways... Well, the story goes like this. Um, we don't have any official uh, G-Sync compatible titles, but the monitors that you described, or the kind of monitor that you described, yes, they do work with G-Sync compatible, but they're just not officially branded as G-Sync compatible. Yeah. So you can expect them to work with the specific that you just mentioned, uh, 144 her 27 inch, and uh, the CDM uh, square. And so not officially certified, no, but, but you can still switch it on in the drivers, right? Exactly. So simple driver work is what it takes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we also just have G-Sync compatible monitors. G-Sync compatible? Of, the real I mean, G-Sync. The real yeah. G-Sync monitors, thanks to Mike. Yeah. Instead of G-Sync compatible monitors. So exactly. maybe that's something for you to uh, check out too. Uh, I'll show you that. I'll show you the model actually in a few minutes because let's uh, go back to, okay. So the origin monitor that was shot, it was a G-Sync 27C2. It's one, I think one of the oldest uh, model in the oldest liner that we actually have. Yeah, well, it was yeah. one of our first monitors. Yeah, exactly. Our first one. So, you know, just for some, some tips and some knowledge for you guys regarding you know, what kind of uh, lineups are out there that might suit you if you're planning on some future upgrades. You know, we have uh, other pro product lineups, obviously. So we have the MAG lineup, the MAG model. Uh, this is actually the model that will, uh, that will that I will show you guys because it has actually been in front of Mike this entire stream. And it now, 
yeah, so this is our MAG271 CQR. And hey, if you're looking at a really great for your value, uh, well, well, great value for your bank with all the features that you will have, that you ever need with um, gaming OSD dedicated, uh, 144 hertz uh, at quad HD, curved so gaming, 40, 40 you know, yeah, just, you know, this is definitely something that you can check out. And uh, if you're wondering, hey, okay, but I'm into 1440p gaming. But I don't really know much about hey, but how exactly to achieve 1440p gaming. So we actually did a dedicated live stream about that some weeks ago, I think. And uh, hey, if you're interested, if you want to do some homework on that, just go check out the live stream and you'll be good to go. Everything that you need to know will be in that live stream. And of course, obviously, if you guys have any questions, uh, just post them in the chat right now. We'll attend the questions and hopefully you won't ask too difficult of a question. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that's for our MAG. The chat they're already saying, FPS competitions change forever. Come get shot if using an MSI G-Sync monitor. Actually, the model that was shot was not a G-Sync model. That's a FreeSync model. Yes, so that was not a G-Sync. And I see somebody is uh, noticing our Lucky. <laughs> lucky is proud. Yeah. Yes, this is our Lucky. <laughs> Maybe the MAG series can stop a Magnum. <laughs> That's a good one. Maybe that's something that we can <laughs> test out. I mean, we'll have to ask. You already destroyed one monitor. Do you want to destroy even more? Yeah, but it, I mean, it we, hurts my soul, man. I mean, the <laughs> MP, I mean, the MPG monitor we destroyed it using drills. This time we can test if the monitor can stop the magnum bullets. Maybe we can ask our American colleagues. Yeah, maybe they can use a magnum bullets. You know, shoot at the screen, see if uh, if it can stop. Them. Awesome, awesome idea. I'll note it down. Not sure if the company will be happy about that, but we'll see. Uh, so, uh, any other questions? Just <laughs> continue chat? in chat. It's a magnificent monitor. <laughs> I damn love. I like those kind of jokes. Exactly. Keep Come on, guys. Coming. Keep it coming. <laughs> it's time for you to shine. <laughs> this is your time to shine. You're having a free platform. Come on, be creative. So you already touched a little bit on G-Sync. Yeah, we already actually exactly. have this monitor here, right? Yeah. So uh, if you guys. Uh, We'll pay attention, I will show you the G-Sync monitor that I was talking about. So yeah, all the previous lineups, the products that I talked about that I touched upon were FreeSync models and compatible with uh, G-Sync, not officially, but it will work by the driver update and changes. Yeah. So you can switch it on. But here is our dedicated G-Sync monitor. Now, this so guy this is has the actual hardware G-Sync yeah. module inside. Then. Exactly, so that module is inside. So it's not just a software thing. And hey, this guy is a little bit different than the rest because not just because it's G-Sync, but for those of you who are interested in competitive gaming, you know, this is really the kind of monitor that you need to look at. Like for example, I love CSGO. I mean, I'm probably gonna be playing CSGO after I go home after this live stream. And Mike's is probably going to play play Rocket League. You know, for those kind yeah. of situations, 240 hertz is what this guy is producing. For esports e games, it. it's exactly awesome. it's wonderful. So, and generally, you no know, esports games. Some tips for you guys uh, if you want to start on esports games. They're generally less heavy on your GPU and hardware than the AAA titles. <clears throat> so you can achieve generally a lot higher FPS with uh, competitive gaming titles. So hence also that's why 240 hertz is really not that far fetched. I mean, with CSGO, I have a very mid end GPU. I can play at 300 FPS. That's pretty. And I'm not sure about yeah. Rocket League. So if yeah, you were, if you were uh, using this one, I'm running a 1070 myself, and I played on 250 FPS. That's like the the maximum FPS you can get in the game. Wow. So that's uh, yeah. But it's still higher than uh, than 240 hertz. So you can actually fully utilize it with Rocket League. Awesome. And yeah, so like I said, this is the G-Sync uh, model for competitive gaming. And if you want to find out more about this model, we actually did a live stream about that. So you can see, hey, is this maybe something for you or not? I can, can already it see out. it as a flat panel. Because yeah. that's different from our other models. Because uh, eSports players, mm -hmm. they tend to prefer flat panels over the more immersive yeah. curved panels. And yeah, just to throw it out there anyways, this is yeah. like a 25 inch, so more suited for competitive gaming because you have less canvas, less space to focus on, so you're less distracted. So if you're all about immersion, then usually a bigger curved monitor is the way to go. Yeah. If you're more about performing and esports kind of titles, then usually 
like 24, 25 inches yeah. is considered the sweet spot for esports? And generally, you know, personally, if I were to play AAA titles, you know, for example, I would grab the MAG 271CQR, just really enjoy the curve immersion with uh, <coughs> 1440p. With uh, <coughs> the gaming OSD, uh, that's for AAA titles, I think, a lot more important than, for example, when I'm playing CSGO, and I go grab a G-Sync monitor flat, 25 inch, and playing at 240 hertz or FPS. So, you know, they really serve different kinds of categories yeah. and different kinds of gamers. So, for example, yeah, personally, the MAG model right there, I'll go for the AAA, and then if I want to competitive gaming, I'll go for the G-Sync model. Uh, yeah, we have one more lineup, which is really the, our most premium lineup that you have already seen, that we have completely destroyed. The I'm, not proud to, I'm not proud to say it, but it happened. It's all for you guys. You, you shouldn't see. be proud of this. No, I oh, it still hurts my soul. I know. I can. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, it's not. It's not every day that this happens, right? <laughs> so yeah. The other model, the other lineup, our most premium one that you have already seen is our with the holes right there. So for you, for those of you guys who have <coughs> just joined, let me uh, show you what we have done. Let's switch it on. Because surprisingly. It still works like a baby. So yeah, you can see. You can see some spots. <laughs> yeah. Those are not just white spots, they're actually holes. So let me turn this to the monitor a bit yeah. more. So Yeah, actually went through the panel there. With the drilling. And yeah, so we <laughs> kind of destroyed this monitor. Just so we can show you guys, hey, we have also tested this ourselves. It's really just it's really that just if you shoot at the monitor or if it's damaged, it can still just work like nothing happened, except for, of course, the area that's actually damaged. But yeah, this is the And MPG. it also depends a little bit on where you hit the monitor, because yes. later on we will later also we'll show, show you. you. But if you hit it right in the middle, then it might get a different story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so this is the MP from the MPG lineup. This is uh, our most premium model for now. Not sure about the future. Maybe there are new models coming out. A very good but question in chat. I want to run three borderless curved monitors on a triple monitor setup. Any recommendations? Well, sure. I mean, we have a lot of options for this. Um, but first, I would like to ask you, okay, but what are you prepared to, say, put out of your wallet? I mean, obviously, you can set up three MPGs with uh, SteelSeries uh, GameSense on there. But that's kind of different than when you use three, say for example, the MAGs. Well, <coughs> bezel is, well, the MPG is maybe just a slight bit uh, smaller with the bezel. So maybe that's more an advantage to you, but then of course that's your personal preference. You know, how, uh, how thick, how broad do you prefer to have your edge? Obviously a thin Because this possible. one is, it's a really thin bezel. Yeah. <coughs> so the MAG model two, it's really also almost frameless. It's very thin. So you can put three of those also next to each other, the 271, so 27 inch. I think for for now, that's quite a trend. People like to, people tend to go to 27 inch for uh, 1440p. That's quite a sweet spot. And then you can line up three of those right next to each other. Or if you really have a little bit of higher budget, you can go for three MPGs. I mean, Mr. Mesterdux gets my point. Getting premium monitors, why? <laughs> I have because, the same feeling, it hurts me Because too. we want to show you we're not cheaping out when it comes to showing you guys how monitors work. So we took the most expensive model because then there will be more to show you. But still, it's, 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 too. it's brutal testing. I know, just blame it on me, man. I pushed it, I pushed it. It still it. hurts so, my soul, man. It hurts I know. my soul. You're not the only one, I think. <laughs> I'm surprised I'm not fired yet, but yeah, sure. It's, uh, it's gonna be cool. <laughs> Uh, We're also saying in chat, best QA test ever. <laughs> we do our best. You fire at us, we fire back. All right, so where was I? We're talking about this. All right, so yeah. yeah. <clears throat> this is the MPG. And uh, this is also the model. So this is actually the 27CQ, right? Yes. So, so this is the Quad HD model. The MPG 27CQ. Um, so there's also a C version, which is 1080p, yeah. and this one is 1440p. So depending on you know what kind of pixel density you like, we have both of, uh, yeah. options available. It's also especially if you want to run three of these monitors and if you want to game on three monitors, then that's going to be heavy on your graphics card. So 
um, depending on your graphics card, of course, it might be better to take three 1080p monitors because it's easier to run than three times 1440p, especially on these kinds of refresh rates. That's that's you, you re need a really, really, really fast graphics card to run that properly. Yeah, you can imagine. I mean, there were quite some options out there, but not everybody's willing to pay that price, I guess. Actually, if you hit it, you can see <laughs> the backlight flash there. Yeah. <laughs> so this, is not, this is not a special function with Mystic Light. This is uh, just uh, something we have actually created forcefully. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, okay, before I uh, go into destroying this monitor even more by opening it up, maybe it's time for uh, the second winner. Oh, that sounds like a good plan. So for the ones who haven't so participated in the meanwhile, yet, I'll just get this ready. Go to msi.com slash two slash insider. I will also drop the link in chat in case you cannot see the giveaway link there. And then I will draw our next winner. I see a familiar name. It's a lucky guy. He won before. Oh, yes. Paul Ulbrink. I can pronounce this. Uh, nickname Red Baron. Uh, congratulations. You also won one twenty US dollar Steam code. Yeah. Guys, come on. So there you can see it. If you participate more often, you also have a chance to win more often. Come on, guys. Go register. I mean, you don't have to register. You just have to perform, perform some few, uh, few simple actions. Yeah. And you have free wallet codes to feed your wallet. Question in chat, does MPG stand for Metal Performance Gaming? <laughs> well, it's actually for MSI Performance Gaming. Yeah, but, but, but <laughs> in this context, I guess it would have been better if this was like Military Performance Gaming, right? <laughs> it's still the story yeah, better. Yeah, it would suit it. So I'm just slowly taking uh, the standard foot apart. Thumb screw, very easy to use. No, no tools needed. I see some people on Facebook. They cannot see the link in chat either. Um, if you watch on our YouTube or our Twitch channel, um, I'm pretty sure there it should be visible. So make sure to check it out in the chat. Uh, I will drop it again. Um, so you can still participate in the giveaway. All right, so very easy step to uh, take off the holding the feet is to have a simple click here. There's a click mechanism and then if you click it, you can just tilt it and just that's it. this camera as well. Yeah, so here, that's what I meant with the clicking. And then you can just take this off. So it's very easy mechanism with the spring in there, right? Yeah. So if I place it this way, it'd be a little better, I think. Oh shit, the camera is getting loose. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit flimsy. The stand where it's on. There we go. That should be better. All right. So <clears throat> then there are a few screws for you to unscrew. Here in the center, we have four pieces. I'm just quickly unscrew them. When I, when I first tried to open this monitor, I thought, you know, it's going to be a, quite a simple process. But boy, I was wrong. It can be quite complicated. It's not as easy as yeah, disassembling a computer. No, it takes quite some time, especially if the monitor is like really tightly well built, like a tank. It's going to be very hard to, you know, make a crack. And you can damage stuff inside if you open it up, so don't try it at home, please. Yes, so I have uh, unscrewed it, and uh, generally when you first start, you have to uh, find a tube that looks something like this. So it has a very thin end, which uh, becomes broader and broader. I don't actually know how to call this, like, like some kind of pen tool or something, how do you call it? Yeah, I don't know how it's called. Because with this... Is there a specific name for this? Yeah, I probably, think so, but yeah. You have to make a crack, preferably if you open the monitor, start on the lower side. That would be the most easiest. You have to 
try to use some brute force and force this in and try to make cracks and then make the cracks open more and more and more and more and more on each side. I have already kind of pre-cracked this a little bit because otherwise it would take me quite some time to open this up for you guys and I imagine that's not something that you're looking forward to. So I'm telling you what you have to do. So once you have made the first crack, you have to stick this in and kind of just, you know, crack everything open. Step by step, step by step until you have the entire row cracked open. And then you just move on to the next row. You can go to left or right, doesn't really matter. So you repeat the same process. You make the first crack and then after you have made the first crack, you just continue to crack the entire roll open. So you get the point. You just finish it all the way up to the end. And then once you're done with that side, just rotate to another side, repeat the same process. And lastly, the other, the last side, same stuff. So once you have cracked everything open, and don't really, uh, don't don't be scared to do it because sometimes it really takes a lot of force to make the cracks open. You might think, hey, you're breaking it. In some cases, in some cases you might break it. So I don't recommend you doing this at home at all. But what I'm trying to say is that it will take some force, some brute force to really crack open the sides. So now I've cracked all the sides open. You can then take off the cap. Depending on what kind of model you have, you know, there might be some extra screws here and there that you have to unscrew. So you really have to check, okay, have I checked every uh, every possible place for a screw to be placed. So now you have opened this up. Maybe we can show it there a bit yeah. just to see the whole picture. So the back side is loose and you get something like this. And the backside is currently being plugged into. It's already starting to look quite <coughs> complex down here. Yeah. A lot of cables. So you have to unplug a few cables in order to really release this whole backside. So I'll tell you what I've done here and Mike will also tell you what everything is and means. So first let's start with the backside. We took this off. So if I show you the original, well, the real backside that you normally see with this monitor, this is the MPG. 27 CQ and the CQ and the C version of the MPG 27 will have their very identical, well, very traditional, I, I would say. It really has been in the MSI design uh, DNA to have this kind of tracer uh, LEDs. So it's a bit hard to see now because yeah. they're off, but there mm -hmm. are, if they're yeah, all, maybe in the, if you really yeah. look at it, there are some can see the traces, traces right here. They all light up, they all have the RGB effect, you know, the rainbow pukes and stuff using our mystic light. So here we have the mystic light for this side. And then here on the other side, we have the other side's mystic light. And then if you really look at the inside, you will see, aha. Uh -huh. At the moment they're uh, keyed out a little bit. Yeah. But so let me just adjust the camera. So we can see the actual color. <laughs> yeah. So remember what I just said that we uh, have two sides for the mystic light, so one here and one here. And this is the PCB, the board that will pr uh, that actually takes care of all the effects and gives the lighting. Well, the lighting doesn't come from the board, but on the other side you will also find the LEDs. And here we have some black pads for some protection and some tapes for keeping stuff in place. And this little connector right here is where the cable from the original mother, uh, monitor, well here you can see this is the cable that will go into this little connector that I just showed you. And this will take care of uh, power and the signal for you know when the mystic light is supposed to do what. Same case for the other board. So these are two identical boards except for its size. The functions are exactly the same. Oh, well. It's being keyed out at the moment, so it's green. So obviously we have green screens right here. So you should we use a different color PCB for yep. next models. That'll be great. It's easier to show. These are green, <laughs> so you can't see it because of the background yeah, and the, the chroma key. So you can there yeah. you can see it. So this is the back side of the of the cap, the missing light controllers, and this little guy right here. Can you guys guess what this is? If you look at the structure of how it's placed. 
Take a guess. It's very easy. There's one separate, very small PCB. Yes. But what does it do? Well, I guess you guys are having a bit of delay, but we'll see. Once we refill it, we can still see who answered correctly. It's our 5A joystick to control OSD, the on-screen display. So this little guy has his own little PCB. And this will be connected to the main board with this little cable right here. So now we have told you any, uh, everything about this little back plate, back cover. Uh, let me just put this on the ground so we can go into the main dish. There's still a lot of stuff in there to show. Yep. I mean, I kind of understand that when, uh, when you look at this, you kind of get like a headache being like, oh my God, there's so many stuff, so many components and so many So that's tables. also why you should be very careful if you don't know what you're doing. Exactly. So <laughs> don't, do it. don't recommend to do any of this if you have no, no. idea what you're doing. And All also, right. if you want to keep your warranty, don't crack open your display. Definitely don't. <laughs> MSI logo. Yes, sure. All right. Uh, let me just start with uh, what we see here on the back plate. So... There are a lot of black tapes right here and uh, black cover right here. So let's just go to them first. The, the black cover here, they're kind of like plasticky and stuff. They are for the cover and protection for what's underneath it. So there's like a whole roll of... Let's just see if we can show. Yeah, a whole roll of PCBs underneath it so this kind of black tapes they will make sure to protect the PCBs from scratching and stuff like that during the manufacturing or when you're trying to open it up and also electrostatic like charge yeah so blocking some signals uh, electrical signals and uh, here we have some tapes so this is the tape this is not the same materials this is more like a plastic uh, cover and this is more like a black tape this is holding some uh, stuff in place. For example, uh, the side of this metal cover and the black tapes. And underneath it, generally, you can also find that they are trying to hold some cables in place to make sure to steer them into the correct way. And it's also to uh, protect the cables from getting loose while transporting the monitor, yeah. right? So tr to make everything more sturdy on the inside. So the same goes with this little back cover for protection and uh, protecting some uh, electrical signals that can uh, provi uh, blah, 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 provide some interference sometimes. And we can also see that there are three kind of flat uh, cables, if we can call it cable. <laughs> yeah, it actually it is a coming flat out. cable. Yeah. yeah, they are being sent to the steel series game sense led strips right here with the pcbs you can actually see the leds on the pcb yeah so let me get this closer so that's what gives the nice rgb effect on yeah. the bottom of the monitor so all the little white guys that you see here the white little fellows uh, they are like the the foundation where the led is actually being placed on the pcb so now we see it from the back but this is only uh, visible on the front side of the monitor you have the yes, led definitely. bar where you can also have your in-game so status and stuff. to make this more clear, this is the front side. And here you can see the, uh, on the MPG, only on our MPG series, uh, we have the Steel Series Game Sense right here. So we have all the LED bars. One, two, three, four, five. This is where the light comes out. And this is how they are being steered and being controlled via Three loose, well, they're actually the, the whole roll of the Steel Series PCB board uh, is being separated in three parts. So you have the middle part right here, and you have the left part, and you have the right part. Yeah, exactly, Mr. Mastodox. It's a ribbon cable, <coughs> the flat one. This. Good job, yeah. So, and they have the individual connectors. Well, the left one and the right one, they actually control two units. Well, they're actually not two units, but if you look at the front, it seems like there are two units, right? Because they're being separated, but actually on the back, they're not separated. It's still one unit. It's just that the lighting is being separated by the cover. Yeah. So, and here, um, we'll have a little connector that steers the panel and controls and sends the signal. And later, I will be opening this little tank right here to show you, okay, but where do all those kind of cables 
go back to, or where do they originally come from, right? The heart of the monitor. Exactly. That's also, on the top, there are also cables coming out. So we'll show you guys, okay, where do they come from? Or rather, where do they go to, if you like. So to do this, you'll have to uh, loosen a few tape first. So the black tape right here, this is holding the black, uh, the, the metal casing in place with some screws. You have to loosen this. And then here you can see there's a screw. And we have to unscrew the screw. It's quite tight, I can see. You did yep, some training a... before you... Oh yes. My... <laughs> I'm an expert at this right now. And on this side, there's another screw. Same process, obviously. Nothing too difficult right now. And then on the other side, there's more tape. So same process. So the metal like cap that protects all the, the hardware underneath, it's pretty yeah. tight in there. Exactly, it's really well protected. So this guy is loose, and then we have, I believe, one last tape on this side. And yeah, well, I can imagine that it's also needed for the monitor, uh, monitor's heart, so to speak, to be well protected because not everybody is really that careful with uh, their monitor. Also, when you're shipping it, you know, it gets thrown around a lot. And when you're going to LAN parties, like you, Sex. do a lot. There's going to be a lot of uh, movements and uh, back and you forth. You might bump into something yeah. or when so transporting it in the car. That was the last piece. And now, it's loose. So I see we still need to remove yeah, some cables. But <laughs> some cables are being well glued some of it to the back plate. So and make sure still they stay in position also. Yeah, and they are still connected. So we gotta loose them in order to also well let's start with the other side, it's easier. Here let's take these three out. So these are the three connectors for the game sense on yeah. the front of the monitor. See? Oh, there's one more connector right here that we have to loosen. Voila, now we can open the back plate. But we have one on the side as well. Oh yeah, still more. So, one more right here. And then the last two on this side. I can't really see right now, but... Um, Yes, it's better this way. So I'm just trying to unplug the other two cables. It's well, quite actually, an operation yeah, to actually, get it yeah, all it's, apart. As you can see, there are a lot of parts and... Um, well, actually, I think the other one was better. I'm trying to uh, just turn around. So you can see, you know, there are a lot of parts and cables and cables and cables. And here you can see well, it's being keyed away, but you have to yeah. imagine these are green. Yes, here you can see. So these three boards, PCBs, are being protected under this metal housing. And this is all also where all the cables come back to or come from, depending on how you look at it. Because this is like the heart of the body. Well, this is, this is like, these are the organs of the body, because there's only one heart. So I'll explain it later when I unscrew those uh, PCBs for you to show the front side because that's where it's really interesting, not the back side. So let's start with the first one. More screws. <laughs> I'm putting them away neatly and nicely so I don't lose them because I generally keep losing screws whenever I touch screws. It's just one of my uh, specialties. So we're gonna take everything out now? Yes! That sounds like a plan. I mean, we could have chosen a G series model, but we went all the way with the MPG model. So you're welcome, guys, because here we have a lot more interesting stuff to show you anyways. And also, before I forget to mention, here we have a full metal plate. You can see, well, not on the other cam, but see? A full metal plate covering the entire screen. This is also one of the reasons why it was so sturdy and why Eric's mind was able to, you know, uh, block a bullet because of this sturdy backplate. 
Yeah, so the panel on the back completely protected by a metal back clip. Yep. So I took out the first PCB. So what do we see here? Well, here we actually have the actually the smallest of the three. It's a power uh, well AC or power uh, adapter converter. So this one will take care of whenever the power comes in. It will make sure that it's being transferred and adapted in the right way, so your monitor is being powered on properly. It also sends out signals, uh, power signals to the panel, if I'm not mistaken, right, Mike? Yeah, so we have two connectors here. So one will be connected to like the motherboard of the, the monitor that we will talk about later. But here you can also see a very small connector, and that's where the backlight is connected, right? Yeah. Actually, uh, if I'm done with this, we can show you guys more appropriately by placing this on the back plate to show you, okay, which cable comes in here, which cable belongs to what. I just have one more play to go. <laughs> so there we have our next PCB. Yeah, I mean, the, Let me the, just grab the person, well, it's still one cable uh, being tied right, up to it. Drag it out. These are Tiny cables are really connectors. fun to disconnect. Yeah, awesome, got it. Okay, so next PCB. So this one is actually the middle sized of the three. And, and it's it also positioned in the middle, right? Yeah, and it takes care of our Mystic Light and the Steel Series Game Sense. So this so is. We see quite a lot of connectors here. So this, we have the main wide connector that goes to the main board of the, the monitor. Then we have the three, they're, here they're on top, but usually they're on the bottom actually. Those are the ones where the. Um, Game sensors connected, right? The LED bars. Yeah, so you have so see three on this side, and then the other two side. Uh, I'm not sure if you mentioned it, but uh, these not two yet. are for the big guys right here. So that's for the, for the Mystic, Mystic Light, Light on RGB the, on, the on the back of the monitor. Yeah. So the other so two PCBs that we showed you before on the so the first thing we showed in the you. back panel. Yeah, and actually right uh, there we see black chip. What does that do? Which one? Right there. Well, this is, I believe, ouch, my finger. It's on, it controls the signals. Yeah, it's actually an, yeah. uh, it's an ARM chip. So you might be familiar. Also, ARM is very well known for all the chips they make for mobile phones as oh, well. This. So this is a Cortex uh, M0, I believe. You have a really good memory. And that one uh, controls uh, all the, the lighting that goes on. Yeah, so it's kind of like the heart yeah. of uh, like the, the uh, Mystic Light and Steel Series. Can yeah. Sense. I can't so it's like the, the main controller chip of all the lighting that goes on in the monitor, which is quite a lot in this one. It's a complicated model. Shall I try it? Uh, I give up. <laughs> you know, this, this kind of cables are so tightly being. They're easy. How? Easy. Wow. <laughs> Okay. Almost there, guys. Yes, we did Final it. The last piece. piece. Let me put this aside a bit. So this is by far the most advanced PCB exactly. in a monitor. So this is like compared to your computer, like the motherboard. So this can is can already see like a nice heatsink here. Like the motherboard for your monitor. So here you can see a gigantic heatsink. You can see this like your CPU cooler, but then. In this case, the motherboard for your uh, for your monitor, so underneath this, is not a CPU, but the scaler. So the scaler chip in here is actually the heart of the entire monitor because that's what takes care of the signal scaling and puts out to your monitor and makes sure that you have the proper, well, it actually steers the whole signal to your panel to show you what you're seeing on your monitor. Yeah, so it makes sure that the signal from your computer transfers to your monitor in the right way to, exactly. to the panel itself. So you can imagine it, it, it has to work a lot. It has, it has to work hard because, you know, especially nowadays with all the high uh, pixel densities. So that's why, you know, there's also a dedicated passive heatsink on this to cool the chip. And, okay, let me gather all the cables so we can connect all the dots. All right. So I took the whole back plate while well, the, the tank cover whatever it is covering the PCBs. I took this off so I'm just gonna put this on the ground. So we can also see a lot of connectors here. 
So this is also where you can find uh, the display connections, for example. So in this case, it's two times HDMI and one display port. Yeah. Um, this one has an uh, external power supply. So that one connects right here. So here's also a small power circuit. Yeah. So that's why it's also very important that uh, you have the proper uh, AC power adapter converter because this will really make sure they will get right the proper uh, electrical output to, yeah. to the back lot. Um, so we can also see a lot of chips here. So maybe you can such explain. A, it's such a headache to put this <laughs> thing together. I mean, <laughs> exactly. So we have a nice oh. chip here. So what does yeah. that one do? This is our uh, MCU. And I know what you guys might be thinking when I say MCU or you might not. Because when I first heard of MCU, I was like, it sounds like Marvel Cinematic Universe. But in this case, it's actually our micro uh, microcontroller unit. So this will really take care of, if you guys are familiar with, uh, well, our gaming OSD, that's like really a big part of this thing. This will really make sure, you know, whatever changes you're making using our gaming OSD, that this will probably inform like, the scaler too, to, you know, uh, process this entire request, so to speak. So you, ha you can have the proper display of whatever it is, whatever changes it is that you're using gaming OSD for to change your display. And the chip itself is actually also an ARM Cortex M1 chip. So it's yeah. essentially the same uh, architecture kind of chip that we also see on the uh, this board, actually, the, the one that controls the RGB. So it's the same type of chip, but with a different function in this situation. Yeah. And here we have a very large chip. So what does that one do? Well, Mike, why don't you tell about this part first? Because I think this little tiny guy that it's one forgotten fast, yeah. Ah, the the really small one. Yeah, you can already see the uh, three point five millimeter jack output. Yeah. So this is where you can connect your headphones, for example, to the monitor. Um, but the audio signal actually it enters the monitor through one of these three connectors, um, which is HDMI or Display Port, and both of them have uh, a digital input. But you want yeah. if you have a three point five millimeter jack output, that's an analog output. So you need a digital to analog converter, also known as a DAC. Yes, to so that's how the that magic signal. happens, right? Yeah. When the signal comes in via HDMI, it gets transferred into this analog little guy, right? Exactly. And coming back to the bigger guy, because this is like, I think, yeah, by also on the, the side here, you see the, yeah, because the two for a microphone and your... Uh, and this phone. one, to my surprise, is like the biggest guy by far, I think, on, on this place here, because it only takes care of the USB. USB hub, in but the yeah, apparently it takes a lot of processing power to really, you know. Here we have two uh, of the USBs uh, that you can see already, and this guy will really make sure that whatever it is that you're doing with the USBs is going to be properly uh, steered and dry uh, and driven. And it's really big. I keep saying that because I never expected this chip to be this big for yeah, quite controlling USB only. And here we also have the the uh, there we have it. The yeah. input for the USB hub. Yeah, so you put in this cable right here, and then uh, it's quite a unusual size, I must say. <laughs> this one, yeah. the Type A connector. Yeah. Yeah. Or the, the Type B connector. <coughs> sorry, these are the Type A connectors, and this is Type B connector. And then yeah. we'll obviously have Type C as well, which is also getting more and more popular. So all kinds of different USB connectors. So the Type B input and two times <coughs> Type uh, A outputs. And here we have a very small chip right next to the scaler. And this is where the firmware is located, right? Yes. So if you're trying to update your firmware of the monitor, this is it has its own dedicated chip. And it's actually not small. It's, it's bigger than the audio chip. Well, it's not an audio chip, but the signal converter. But it's quite. And the more I look at this whole thing, the more it reminds me of a motherboard, right? With all the, Essentially, with all it the is interfaces. Essentially, a motherboard. Yeah. yeah, and it has its own dedicated hard and heat sink. And yeah, people have some questions maybe. Mr. Masterdox is saying, it's asking for trouble connecting a headset to a monitor, getting up and forgetting to take it off, makes you pull the screen off <laughs> of its foot. <coughs> Accident waiting to happen. I personally never had that luckily. Because you have wireless headset, right? Uh, personally I do, but also when I was still using a wired one, uh, uh -huh. I always use the, the the headset hanger. I also have it in this model, for example, the MAG. You have yeah. a hanger on the side, <coughs> and I put it off and just hang it on the, the monitor. Exactly. When I get so up. when you actually do have the hanger, do use yeah. it, right? 
Uh, that makes sense to you. Regrettably, use. I must say that the, the, the situation that Mr. Mustard Dog described has happened to me maybe one or two times. Yeah? I, yeah. I, I haven't had it so far. With one time... Uh, but with that's also risky with your computer, because if you keep your headset plugged into your computer, you might also drag that one off. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to say, because the one of the two times was quite fatal. I actually destroyed... What did you destroy? Well, I broke two glasses. Uh, <laughs> there was like a, a bowl of soup that went over my pants. Well, uh, when I got up, it kind of hit my leg. So, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe my mobile phone also flew in the soup. So <laughs> that was Savage. quite fun. Yeah. All right. So we're, where we were have we? more stuff to show actually on yeah. this on this motherboard. Because here I can see two connectors. So one very, very small one and one slightly bigger one. Yeah. So where are these so this, this one is actually going all the way. Well, let me grab the right cable because here you can see uh, this is the Some cable that will go right into it. And this will go all the way if you trace it to... Oh, yeah, shit, I moved the... it. Well, actually can't really show you because the monitor is so big, but it will go to the little connector that will eventually steer the panel and give it power and signals. Mm -hmm. So, this little guy will make sure that whatever it is that it has to show on your display will be shown. Because that's where the power and the signal comes from from the motherboard to connect to the display. So, you know, that this uh, is a 144 hertz, one millisecond display, and everything that you see on this display is actually being steered from that little guy. That one? Aren't you talking about this one? Wait. <laughs> I think you're confusing two connectors. Cause here no, no it, it is that one. Because this one is for the steel, steel series power and the PCB. No, this is the EDP. So that's where the image signal goes to. Wait, I think it got So here we have confused. the PCB. Maybe yeah. we can drag the tape off so we can see what happens underneath. Let's take the tape off. This is actually also being glued to the monitor. Is that what the it's connected connects to? <laughs> Some people responding to the, the, the headset gate. Uh, let me see. See, Hathaway is saying, oh, I have been whiplash yeeted by my headset many times. It's a very familiar problem, it seems. <laughs> DKIINAM is saying, my PC is heavier than my he head. Best way to stop that from happening. <laughs> that could also work. So we have to tape off now. <clears throat> yeah. So here we can see the, right. the right. PCB where the display is controlled from, right? Yeah, so th and these little stripes will be uh, steering the rolls. Well, yeah, you can show columns. Uh, like rows of columns. pixels yeah. on the... Yeah. So it, it's being separated into different kind of categories. So yeah, I kind of got confused uh, right before. <laughs> so uh, I can't really show but you. But it is quite side, confusing. There are like one, two, three, four, <laughs> so five, six, connectors. seven. There are eight yeah. columns in total. So you can kind of see the panel like they're being separated into eight uh, so individually steered driven sections, which happens via this whole big PCB. And it's actually being separated here in the middle. I think the, the reason it wasn't really clear, I think it's because, you know, due to its size and because it's curved. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so if you, you it's hard to make a curved PCB like exactly, that. Exactly. Because so we have two separated PCBs. Because it really goes from the okay. one end to the other end. I'll grab it. Okay. And here we in the middle, we have a split section between two PCBs. Uh, being also connected by this connector. So here, let me grab the cable. So the connector here is essentially a display port cable from the motherboard to the panel. And here we have yes. the, the so cable that we, goes with it. So uh, let us connect it so you can yeah. understand a bit more clearly. So here you have the motherboard with the. So you connect this side. EDP connector, it's called. The other side. And then you just plug this one into the whole PCB that's controlling your display. And voila. So 
even though there are a lot of individual uh, cables, if you really think about it and trace it back to where it comes from, it actually makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So it's, and then uh, let us see. So we have talked about this whole PCB right here, mm -hmm. and uh, on the other side, let's see, or something else to show you. Well, I think we already touched uh, up on this because this part. Oh, yeah, let's talk about this first. Yeah, so that's uh, we also what's quite interesting to show in the bottom part here. We have another connector that this actually is uh, right here. Yeah. So let me see if we can get the connection. Can we drag it a little bit up here? Let me just unplug the EDP connector. Second, they've been connected. Ah, there we go. Got it. So here we have a connector that goes underneath. It's a little bit hard to show with all the tape. Let me drag it out real quick. There we go. There it is. And that one essentially powers the uh, backlight of the monitor. So that cable will connect to this board. So that's the way the power converter kicks Exactly. Up. Exactly. So this so cable yeah. will go to uh, that connector. So this one will power the backlight from there. Let me see, we have the motherboard, one more we have to show. Because we have the black guy here. That one is for the joystick, right? Yes, so uh, as you remember earlier when I uh, took off the cover, I took out this little guy. <laughs> maybe you remember, maybe not, but this one end goes into the joystick, the little piece of PCB. Huh? Yeah. You looked. But yeah, so that goes into the little PCB and the other guy will go into here. So that's how the joystick will make connection with the main board. And uh, see, we already take talk to this cable. Let me just put this aside again. We already talked about this. Uh, we we'll talked about this. This is also explained. Ah, so in yes. case you have any questions, drop them in chat, and we will try to answer yeah. as many of them as possible. And one of the very simple but basic. <laughs> Mr. Um, Masterdux is saying, note to self, don't buy, buy a broken uh, MSI Premium mon monitor in an attempt to fix it. Yeah, you, you have to know what you're doing because it's quite complicated in there. Yeah. So I just plugged one little cable in here, which we didn't mention yet, which is very basic, but without it, it's really impossible to use your uh, monitor unless you're very technical. So this little cable goes to here which is where the button to turn on and off your monitor is located. So it also has its own dedicated little PCB, which is like this big, right here. You can see it. And it so you might know this also from a regular motherboard. You also have these pins where you have to connect your uh, power button, LED, etc. So this yep. is a bit similar. <coughs> that also gets controlled from here. Exactly. So then let me put this guy a little. Uh, C. Hathaway is asking, do you both specialize in monitors specifically or are you just incredible knowledgeable on this and many other MSI products? Well, if uh, I'll be honest with you, uh, I'm not that big of an expert as Mikey right here when it comes to really technical, technical, technical I'm stuff. I'm a nerd on this kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I like this. <laughs> so, you know, I do a lot of homework, so I can uh, probably also uh, probably inform you guys. But uh, when it comes down to it, you know, this is like really the technical technical guy, and I'll try I'm trying stuff. to get there yet. So, yeah. <laughs> so you know, I'm I'm great with features and stuff like that, and what a monitor does and can do. But once I open up the monitor, that's like kind of a different world. But once you really do your homework, it it, all it makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah. It makes sense. It still it is somewhat. Yeah comparable to a normal computer yes of course some some stuff is slightly different but yeah um, but the, the main things you have like the scaler is a bit comparable to the processor yeah you have like a motherboard uh kind of pcb um where you essentially have all the same kind of connectors from so if you really want to learn it you know it's i must admit it's really interesting to find out you know hey in a model like this, uh, the MPG27 uh, CQ or C, you know what kind of parts 
are being hidden under the hood that steers everything, that drives everything. And obviously here you can see there are three separate uh, parts and they also need to make connection with each other. So one has its own, each has its own uh, purpose. So like earlier when we explained, and if you're new, this one, the, the smallest guy, is like the power, the AC uh, converter. And here we have a specific dedicated PCB for SteelSeries uh, GameSense, the, the lighting on the front, the light bars, and our Mystic Light. So here so we So this have is completely an so RGB PCB, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> also the reason why we took this big guy is because, you know, if we took the G27C2 series, um, this is going to be a lot less interesting because there's no Mystic Light on there and also no Steel Series. And here we have five individual connectors that will connect to five individual uh, sections that controls each of the Mystic Light and Steel Series game sense. And here we have the motherboard, so-called motherboard PCB for your monitor. And these guys also need to make connections. So for example, um, let me connect the power, the power connector. Well, not the power connector, but uh, the power AC converter. Wait, that's the wrong one. This, sorry, this guy is guys for, uh, yeah, that's for the RGB. PCB for RGB, Mystic Light and Steel Series. So, they also need to make connection right here. So we actually have uh, a question that relates a little bit to this. Uh, Turtle sure is asking, out of the three parts, which is the most important? Well, essentially you need at least this, the, the motherboard and the power converter. Yeah, so they, they are necessary for the motherboard to function. Um, this is only for the RGB. So if you would take this out, the RGB wouldn't work but the monitor still would. Um, so these two are completely necessary. The one that Ja is holding now and this mm. one are really necessary. But I would say if you want to rank them in importance, this is where most is happening. Yeah. So this is like the, the heart of the monitor essentially. So this is like luxury slash must. Premium well, feature PCB, yeah. you could say. And these two are essential. So yeah, and these, these two obviously to also have to be connected. Yeah. And plugging them in is always a lot easier than taking them out somehow. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So as you can see, we have two big connectors for each of the board. So this way they can also connect to each other and make the right connections to steer the uh, signals and the necessary functions. So, you know, it's actually not that complicated as a motherboard in the CPU, I mean, in a computer case, right? Yeah, it is, uh, it's quite comparable, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, if you really break down the motherboard of a computer, it's I think it's much more complicated than this. Yeah. it's uh, The motherboard is bigger, obviously. It's more complex. You have more chips on there. <laughs> so, But I think most people have more knowledge about what happens inside a PC than what happens inside a monitor. Exactly. And that's why we were hoping that a lot of you guys uh, will be very knowledgeable about, okay, the PCs we are also know. a lot, they were made a lot more user friendly for do it yourself yeah. PC builders and, and monitors not, are not. This is not something that will happen every day yeah. or. It's not that you, you buy parts and separately and build your own monitor. So, but now you at least have an idea of, okay, okay, what goes on under the hood or behind in the cover of a monitor, you know? <clears throat> okay, do monitors have motherboards? Uh, hey, how, the, how will the lighting be steered uh, and driven by what exactly part what exact part so that was our idea of you know uh, just trying to hook you up with the knowledge about how the monitors work because a lot of us already know how the computer works and so that's also why we picked the mpg because it's the most uh, advanced model with most features <coughs> yeah. so for example the the uh, separate pcb for the rgb is of course not present in all monitors if the monitor doesn't have rgb you don't need a separate pcb for that um, but the MPG, because it has both the Mystic Light and the Steel Series Game Sense, it has quite an advanced uh, uh, PCB on there to make it all run properly. Yep. And I'm just trying to. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So here we have three. Maybe it's also interesting for you to know three separate little PCB stri strips, so to speak. 
Can you come a little bit closer and I can show it up close? All right. Table's not long enough. So here we have one. This guy will be sticked into here, so that the uh, and this guy will be sticked into here, and accordingly this one will be sticked into here. And individually, they are the ones that take care of the entire role of Steel Series Game Sense uh, lighting, and they only have this little flat ribbon cable that will be uh, going into what we have uh, explained to you earlier. The dedicated PCB for Steel Series and Mystic Lights. So, for example, you open it up and then you just stick it in and then close it. The same with the other two. And the last two big ones on the back. So, you stick them all in, and that's how you connect everything all the lighting on your monitor. Well, not the panel lighting, but the RGB lighting yeah. to the specific PCB. And this then is then. In uh, well, let me show you here. This will then in turn be connected to the motherboard, so then they can have the correct communications. So yeah, when you when it comes down to it, when you break it down, everything makes sense. You just have to remember, okay, which part does what. And so then, if you still have any questions? Please drop them in chat, and I think then it's a good idea to pick another winner. Exactly. So probably after watching this, you can be uh, a uh, monitor repairman. <laughs> so you can add that to your CV. And if you're really interested in this whole thing, you know, I recommend you just look up some old monitors that you never use anymore that's still laying around. Or if it's already broken, yeah. it's pretty cool just to open it up open and it see up. what happens inside there. Yeah. And I think you can recognize some stuff that we also mentioned today. Definitely. If it's an older model, some things will look slightly different maybe. You can never have enough or too much knowledge. So who's the next winner? So our next winner is, how do you pronounce it? So this one's for you. <laughs> but I think I did the last one. You did? I don't think so. No, I did the last one. Okay. This one's for you, Jack. Uh, let me just stick to Justine. Justine? Justine. Congratulations. Congratulations. You won a 20 US ah. dollar Steam code. Oh, what the heck. It's Hot, 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 Hutchinson? Justine well, Hutchinson? I think Hutchinson. Something like that, yeah. I think it's not even a weird name. I think it's a British name. Sounds like it. Yeah. Well, shame on us then. <laughs> Justin Hutch, Hutch, Hutchinson. Hutch, Jesus. Yeah, Hutchinson. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. I hope you enjoy some uh, Steam games. So uh, I think we pretty much covered the whole thing except for ripping out the panel, but that's uh, <laughs> maybe for another time. And uh, yeah, if you guys have questions, just fire it up. Uh, Joe Brown says here. in chat, I feel fully qualified now. You should be. So what holds you back? Exactly. Just don't mention you uh, if you do anything wrong that we encouraged you, okay? Because we didn't. <laughs> yeah, I think for me personally, it was very n satisfying to know, okay, that thing that I'm staring at every day, how it's being controlled, how it works, and everything around that. So I hope you guys feel the same. I know that Lucky definitely feels like so. I hope you played, paid close attention to what we explained today. Yes, I did. <laughs> but uh, if you guys have uh, any more questions, let us know. And if not, then uh, I think we're going to conclude today's live stream. And I hope you are a lot more knowledgeable than before. So for next week. Yeah, all right. Next week is going to be very interesting, right? Because it's very confidential. I don't think we can say too much about this. Yeah, we can. Only All we can say is that Peter will do the live stream. Yes. So you can draw your own conclusions from that. Yeah. And uh, it's same place, same time. Next Wednesday. And make sure to watch it. Exactly, because it's super, uber, duper top secret. Now it is, but <laughs> next week we'll be fine. Yes. I'm sure you guys will enjoy it. Exactly, and uh, well, that's it for today's live stream then, huh? Thank you for watching, and see you next week. Have a good day, guys. See ya. Cheers.